Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we're in the bathroom. It's gonna be my skincare routine, so if you guys wanna see how I go from this to this, just keep on watching. So before we get started and I show you guys an actual skincare routine, I wanted to take this time to say that please, please don't just buy these items and use them. Not everything that works for me will work for you and vice versa. Obviously, I'm not a dermatologist. I didn't study for it. These items just work for me. I do do some research um, and that's why I've picked out these items that I thought would work for me and they did. So I'm thankful for that, but I suggest you do the same and do research according to what you feel your skin needs and always, always um, do patch tests before you do, um, before you commit to an item full force. Most skincare companies will actually suggest that. So what I did was I put it right here and then I covered it with a band-aid and I left it there for an hour. Um, and because I saw no weird reaction or anything, I decided to use it on my face. Take this with a grain of salt. Don't, you know, blindly um, go, out, go out and buy these uh, skincare items. They work for me, but it might not work for you. And if it does work for you, I would be so happy. But please don't feel like you have to do every single step either. Um, this is just what's good for my skin. So take a good look at your skin, assess it, research, um, ask a doctor if you want, or a dermatologist. Um, there's plenty of people with more knowledge than me, but I'm just trying to share what works for me. And they're all pretty budget friendly. Um, and I'm really happy because for me, this is sustainable. I can keep buying these products and not have to worry um, that, you know, something that is... Uh, really essential in my skincare is like a hundred dollars, which none of these are. I think the most expensive one is $14. So that's something that I really love about my personal skincare routine. Anyways, let's get on to the video. That was just my little speech for you guys. Um, anyways, roll the clip. Okay, so I took you guys close up so that you can see everything that's going on. Maybe a little bit. There we go. So first things first, I always just get my hair out of my face. Anyways, the first step is always to remove our makeup. And right now, I've had this makeup on for... What time is it? It's currently 11.43. I've had this on for 9 hours. Almost 10 hours. So I'm excited to get it off. First things first is... Oh yeah. Okay, so if you had falsies on, of course, remove them. The first step is to remove our makeup. And I have a couple products that I like to use. This has always been a staple of mine, which is the Kirkland Facial Wipes, the daily facial towelettes. Um, I just use them to clean my makeup off my skin. But lately, I have really been enjoying the Green Clean uh, make makeup melt away cleansing balm my pharmacy so I think I'm actually going to use this one for you guys today because I do have a lot more makeup on than usual and um the the balm really just helps to break everything down so as you can see it's in a solid balm form and I just take some on my finger a little bit more actually I'll start with that much. I'll start with about that much. And I'll work it into my fingers and just go straight in. Once you work it in and it hits the warmth of your hands, it um, turns into an oil and it's breaking down everything, as you can see. If you have contact lenses, I suggest you taking them out before you do this. Okay, so once your whole face is free of makeup, you can just rinse it with water, which is what I do. And then I just like to 
pat dry, which is really silly because we're going to cleanse next, but I take the opportunity to wipe off any of the remaining gunk first. And as you can see, because we really rubbed the balm in to our eye area, there is barely any residue. But what I like to do is if there is a lot of residue, I still go in with a micellar water and a cotton pad for my eye area if I need it. Usually when I use the wipes, I'll use the wipes for my face and not my eyes because I don't like the tugging and I'll just use this in a couple of these and it gets the job done. But this just saves me a little bit of time because I don't have to do two steps. But either way works. I mean, you still get the makeup off and that's the important thing. The next step is to cleanse. And even though this is a cleansing balm and it claims to take away even impurities and makeup and all that kind of stuff, I still like to actually cleanse with a face wash. I don't think that this is enough. I like to feel that it's just stripped my skin of all the gunk, of all the makeup, of everything that's in my pores. So this has been a holy grail skincare product for me for the past two, almost three years. And it's really surprising because it's nothing too expensive actually. It's just the Neutrogena Oil-Free Acne Stress Control face wash. And it has the little beads in it, salicylic acid to help fight acne. This was actually what helped me clear my skin. I used to have a uh, bad acne um, all throughout here and here on the contours of my face. I mean, you could still kind of see that that's my most sensitive spot. So if I ever um, have any bumps or breakouts, it's usually still around that area. And you can still see some scarring left over um, in person. You'll, uh, it's kind of hard to see on camera. But anyways, this was what actually helped me clear my skin. I love this product. I take about this much. I usually use more face wash if it's a day that I've had makeup on. I also use this in the morning, but I use significantly less. Now that we've cleansed our skin, the next step is to tone our skin. I have a couple here that I alternate between. Um, this is Witch Hazel, and I use it on days or nights, sorry, that I feel like my skin is sensitive, or if I've had a no makeup day, um, there's not much gunk on my face, you know, it doesn't need that much work. I just use a regular Witch Hazel toner, which you can buy at the drugstore for like a dollar. It comes in a big jug. I just put it in a container to make it easier and to make it fit into my medicine cabinet. The other one is by The Ordinary, and it is the Glycolic Acid Toning Solution. And this is really good for, I'm going to read it off the website, it's good for mild exfoliation for improved skin radiance and visible clarity. It also improves the appearance of skin texture with continued use. It contains Tasmanian pepperberry, aloe, and gin, ginseng root to help soothe the skin because um, the acid in this may irritate you. Um, sometimes it stings the face. Um, so I don't use this when I have any open breakouts because it's just going to hurt really, really badly and sting so bad. Um, but I do really see the benefit of it uh, clearing my skin and helping the texture of uh, my skin overall. I just put a good amount on a cotton pad. Just, you know, just to soak it a little bit. And I rub it across my skin. And after we've rubbed that all over our skin, as you can see, my cotton pad still has leftover residue of makeup on it. So I just really, really get in there, especially along the hairline, because not only are you toning that part of your skin, you're also getting rid of any makeup that's left. So away with that. So after that, I actually go in with another toner. I know it's kind of extra, but like I mentioned before, the glycolic toner uh, kind of irritates, not irritates my skin, but it does make it feel a little bit more sensitive. And to repair it from that, I use the Trader Joe's Rose Water Facial Toner. It's to hydrate and refresh, and I think it really helps to soothe my skin after it's been irritated. And so I just do a couple spritz of this, let it soak in. And 
I just let it soak into my skin, it helps to hydrate even more. So it's another layer of hydration and also it calms my skin down. After we've let this dry on our face, um, I go in and I start to treat my skin with serums. So my face is kind of sticky right now. Um, the glycolic acid toner actually makes your skin a little bit sticky. Um, I'm not quite sure why, but that's just the effect that it has on me. And so my first serum that I use is also from The Ordinary. It's the niacinamide 10% plus 1% of zinc. This serum is indicated to reduce the appearance of skin blemishes and congestion. A high concentration of this vitamin is supported in the formula by zinc salt, blah, 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 blah. It is to balance visible aspects of sebum activity. If you don't know what sebum is, it's the oil that your skin produces, um, which, can cause, which can cause breakouts and blemishes. Another benefit of niacinamide is, is an effective ingredient for a brightening skin tone. So it comes in a little dropper. It's a clear formula. It just looks like kind of slimy. So just, I just put mm, about just a little drop on my hand. Rub it in with my fingers. And I'll rub it into my face. I'll pat it in also. I've been using this product for about one, one to two years. Okay, and so after it soaks in really fast. So after that soaks in, I actually use another serum. And this is also by The Ordinary. This is called The Buffet. And the reason why I did this one first and this one second is because I actually write on their website if you're combining um, or layering serums in your skincare routine, use the one that you want to reap the most benefits from. It doesn't mean that it makes your second or third serum or whatever you put on your face less effective. It just means that you're fully, fully soaking up this and it targets the problem faster and quicker than what you would put secondary. And the buffet looks almost identical to the other one. It comes in the same bottle. And this is good for targeting a bunch of different signs of aging all at once. I know it seems silly for me to use this, but it also just has um, properties in it to just make your skin overall nicer, overall clearer. And the name suggests that it does a lot of things at once. And I, you know, I just wanted to get one and done. So same thing. Looks the same. I'll put the same amount and I'll do the same thing. That's it for serums. And the next is to hydrate and moisturize our face. And how I like to go about that is first with a facial oil. This is another product from The Ordinary. This is the 100% cold pressed virgin marula oil. And the benefits of this, let's read it on the website. It offers antioxidants, hydrates the skin, and it's claimed to help restore a radiant tone. And this is 100% unrefined. You can actually use it for your skin and for your hair. And it's a light oil, or light colored oil, so I put a couple drops on my, my fingers. I warm it up, and I, I uh, swipe it on my skin, but mainly pressing motions. You don't want to. You don't want to tug on your skin. I um, actually have really oily skin, but ever since I started using Marula oil and um, proper moisturizer, it actually has combated my excess oil and has made it kind of more balanced. And I feel like now I have pretty normal skin. So if you're suffering from oily skin, don't shy away from oils and hydration because that's actually what you need. Just because you have oily skin doesn't mean you're making too much, it means you're not making enough and that's why your skin is overcompensating by producing too much oil. After we've let the marula oil um, kind of soak in the skin, if I have any open spots or blemishes or um, something under the skin that I feel is gonna be a pimple, I spot treat it with tea tree oil. Um, right now I don't have any, but if I do, I just dab it on my fingers and I'll apply it to that spot directly but since we don't I don't have any thankfully I mean I never know um 
I just skip that step. And then next and almost final step is we'll actually put on a hydrating moisturizer on top of the oil to seal everything in. Um, and for that, I use the Garnier Skin Active Hydrating 3-in-1 Moisturizer. I get the one with aloe juice. That's what it looks like inside, just a big pot of cream product. I get not too much because I don't want to, you know, draw my skin. I just get about that much. Rub it in my, skin, uh, my fingers. Rub it in to my skin. Okay, and it feels really good. It feels really refreshing because of the aloe juice that's in there. And next step is our lips. I never go to sleep without this on my lips, slathered on it like a mask. It's the Vaseline Lip Therapy in the in the cocoa butter flavor. Pop it open, put some on my fingers, and slather it on. I go a little bit thicker with this because it is overnight and it helps kind of like a mask. Hmm to help keep them um, moisturized and supple and especially in the winter time my lips just chop right off. So the last step is our under eyes and for eye cream I actually use coconut oil, extra virgin coconut oil that's organic and it's actually the cooking grade, the food grade and I just bought this at my local Sprouts or any health food store, any grocery store really. Um, but be wary about this because a lot of people have allergies to coconut oil actually on their skin so they get reactions um you know it doesn't work for everybody uh but it works for me and i actually just started i started using this um for a way to hydrate my eyelashes because i didn't want to use castor oil but i found that it was helping my eyelids and i put it on my eyelids i just press and my under eyes to remain supple and hydrated and smooth so I use it for that and it hasn't caused any allergic reaction on my skin um, I don't put too much though obviously and I only use it at night because I don't want to clog any pores and cause a milia under my under eyes I also wanted to give you guys a super zoomed in close-up on my skin so that way you can see what it looks like after I've done the skincare. It looks really glowy, um, and that's you know mainly because of the oil. But I like this just overnight. It helps to give my skin suppleness when I wake up in the morning. So this is what we are currently looking like. As you can see, I don't have perfect skin. I have some blemishes still, and you know I have a, you know some texture, but that's okay. It's a lot better than what it used to, and that's all I could ask for. Okay, so that's it for my skincare routine. I know it's a bit extensive, but it works for me, and I don't want to mess with it. I do this every night. I play around with it depending on what I feel my skin needs that day. Um, it's kind of weird, but you kind of have to learn how to listen to your skin. You know, if it's feeling dry or or really sensitive you have to kind of adjust accordingly but these are just some of my favorite products I hope you found it informative helpful found some tips and tricks um, something I didn't include though are my masks um, because I don't do that on a nightly basis I do one you know once a week sometimes once every two weeks if I remember if you guys want me to create a different video make a different video about all the masks that I use that are in rotation I'll do that for you guys um, and I'll talk about them specifically and what they're good for so let me know if you're interested in that um, comment down below any of your holy grail skincare items so that we can have a discussion in the comments and maybe you can help someone out too that's reading the comments um, and let me know if you guys actually uh, use any of the products that I do or um, feel like any of these will work for you let me know or if you try it that would be really cool to read your guys' comments um, give this video a thumbs up if it helped you um, and thank you for subscribing, liking, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Good night!